Uh, sure. Well, um, we're, as you know, very optimistic on both. I think the biggest surprise to us in the last year, we expected institutional investors to start moving into uh, Bitcoin. Uh, on that score, Mass Mutual was a surprise, a positive surprise to think about all the hoops that Mass Mutual had to go through to put $100 million on its general account, even though it's 0.001%. They had to go through a lot of regulatory hoops. So that was a big surprise or a positive surprise, though we expected institutional investors to start moving in. What we did not expect from institutions was, you know, the diversification uh, uh, on their balance sheet, you know, diversification of their cash assets into Bitcoin. That has been a, a positive surprise that uh, we think is going to continue. We think that, uh, uh, and, and there's another thing that uh, we think could come out of this related to it. You think about 60-40 when you talk about balanced accounts, 60% equity, 40% bonds. Well, look what's happening to bonds right now. Uh, talk about the need for diversification here. If we are ending a 40-year secular decline in interest rates and are even just flattening out or moving up slightly, that asset class has done its thing. What's next? And we think crypto could be uh, the solution. There. I don't think rates are going up a lot. I agree with you. We are in a deflationary environment for two reasons. One is massive innovation, which is technologically enabled and deflationary in nature. And then the second is creative destruction, uh, which is caused by disruptive innovation, forcing highly leveraged companies to cut prices to support their debt service. So we see those two coming at us, yes. Uh, uh, but we do know there's a concern given all of the quantitative easing and the unhinged monetary policy. There's no rules-based monetary policy out there uh, except for Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, so we think this diversification makes sense in terms of cash, but fixed income has really done 40 years of very hard work and sure, we'll be in a deflationary environment, but uh, if Bitcoin is uh, represents a new asset class, why not uh, move into it? Well, to me, that's a key point that's happening lately. I, I mentioned this on live TV, and sometimes you get the pushback. It's like, oh, that's the trigger I wanted. I see Bitcoin, certainly today, potentially transitioning to the risk off asset. I mean, funds are flowing from equities, i.e. Tesla, uh, from bonds, from gold. And you look at days like today, bonds are down, Stocks are down, Bitcoin's up. Is that a potential here? Are we kicking into inflection where Bitcoin maybe is a risk off asset? It's Tina, there's no other alternative. Well, I think we're in such early days here. When you think that the market cap or network value of Bitcoin is roughly 900, 950 billion dollars, think about that in the in the context of an Apple. It's less than half of Apple's valuation. And here we're talking about the reserve currency of the crypto asset world, the first global digital monetary system. Uh, it's a very big idea. And now we have institutions moving, uh, embracing this idea, or at least uh, using Bitcoin as a hedge uh, against what could go wrong. And so, uh, as you say, Mike, there is a, a, a risk off. I mean, when you think about it, cash is supposed to be uh, the ultimate risk off uh, uh, asset of choice. And and here we have uh, Bitcoin serving that role. It's very interesting. I don't, I think it Mike. may be early to say it's risk off though, Mike. Um, what, what I would say though, what we're seeing and experiencing from investors is that it's not necessarily only going to be those momentum traders or folks that generally only invest in technology or technology related investments that have become excited about allocating to crypto. Um, thinking about our investor base, we're really starting to see allocations across investor mandates. Um, and it's not just global macro folks for whom crypto now could certainly be considered to be part of um, the ways in which they invest and in their investment mandates, but it's really moving towards even value investors risk of investors, it really runs the entire gambit. And I think, you know, the reason why I say it may be early to call it risk off is because it's now generally going to be accepted 
as something that everyone can evaluate as an investment option, but I still would say it's not necessarily something that's going to be appropriate for every investor out there. Given where we are in the life cycle of this, the fact that we now have tangible commentary and or policy um, related to this asset class from the SEC, CFTC, IRS, FinCEN, um, Treasury, it, it does definitely add some validation to the asset class's staying power. And I do think that all of the folks in each of the seats at those respective organizations certainly recognize the role that the regulatory regimes here in the U.S. play on a global level. So to your point, Mike, about this being global in nature, decentralized protocols that are gaining adoption on a global level, certainly the U.S.'s stance and posture towards this is certainly going to be paramount. And, and I certainly know that they appreciate that the world is watching. And so to Kathy's point, having regulators, um, you know, taking on new seats who are familiar with this technology, um, you know, we're, we're totally hopeful that they will continue to um, if not broaden uh, their engagement with the industry. I just so want to make, of, go ahead. Oh, sorry, make one comment on um, your, your focus on China, which I believe is apt. Uh, so Bitcoin, the, the Bitcoin blockchain is an open source technology. And uh, China, mostly for capital control reasons, really wants to limit its exposure. It wants its own currency. I think this is a really important point because open source technologies, if you're going to isolate your country from all of this innovation, uh, it, you know, that's a problem competitively. And I've, I've been thinking about that uh, quite a bit, our, our competitive uh, dynamic relative to China. Uh, and I, I also agree the regulators uh, in the U.S., while they, they have been really uh, not forceful in any way. They uh, they have basically stood back and they do not want to be blamed for, for preventing the next big thing, the next big thing in the internet, as you say. And I see there's a question here about the technology. Is this old, is this going to be old tech? I, I think that the beauty of the, the Bitcoin blockchain is that its uh, speed and cost are not, you've heard this before in the community, are not bugs, not, uh, they are features. This is the most secure uh, blockchain out there. And so the idea of digital gold uh, 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 on, on in the, the most secure network in the world is really an important concept here. So no, it's not old technology. There are going to be other other technologies, other blockchains for other use cases uh, that will not serve the same purpose as Bitcoin, but I don't think that they will obviate uh, Bitcoin's role.